Good evening and welcome to St. Andrew. We're happy that you've joined us this evening to celebrate the Epiphany of the Lord. I am Linda Martins. The lectors for this Mass are Carmen Bergoglio and Ron Plichta. Our music will be led by Stephen Paul along with Spirit Song. And serving the Mass are Luke and Noah Marchese. The presider for this liturgy is Father Brian, assisted by Deacon Mark. To minimize distractions during the Mass, we ask you to silence all cell phones and personal devices. Now please stand and greet your neighbor. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Feast of the Epiphany, and there's a beautiful tradition in the church of blessing one's home with blessed chalk. So right now, Deacon and I are going to bless these kits, and they'll be available for you at the entrances to take home after Mass to bless your own home. Blessed be your name, O Lord. You are the fount and source of every blessing, and you look with delight upon the devout practices of the faithful. Draw near, we pray, to these your servants, and as they use these symbols of their faith and devotion, grant that they may also strive to be transformed into the likeness of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of the world. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed a sight upon our hearts that we have passed through the shadows of this world and reached the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See... Darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. 
but upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about, they all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant in what you see, your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you, the wealth of the nations shall be brought to you, caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. of Tarshish and the island shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy, and save the lives of the needy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as, as it has now been revealed. To his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are coheres, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him, assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, and you Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. This past week, there were two stories that were very prominent in Catholic media. The first was, as you can imagine, the funeral on Thursday of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. And as you can see, we have his picture here, which we'll have through the Uh, customary nine days of mourning of a Holy Father. Uh, Much has been put out online about his tremendous scholarship, uh, ability as a teacher, and yet pastoral humility as he fulfilled the office of Pope. The second story that was rather recurring in Catholic media dealt with an injury that occurred on Monday night. Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin took a hit to the chest, and he went down and he got up. Then he fell backwards and went into cardiac arrest. And as he was leaving the field in the ambulance, his teammates, they gathered in huddle, and they prayed. And then something very remarkable occurred. ESPN's commentator, former Detroit Lion, Dan Orlowski, took a moment to lead his fellow analysts, Marcus Spears and Laura Rutledge, in prayer for Hamlin as well. An outspoken believer in Jesus Christ, he said, It's just on my heart that I want to pray for Damar Hamlin right now. And then he recited the following prayer. God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard because we believe 
that you're God. And coming to you and praying to you has impact. We're sad, we're angry, and we want answers. But some things are unanswerable. We just want to pray and truly come to you and pray for strength for Damar, for healing for Damar, for comfort for Damar, to be with his family, to give them peace. If we didn't believe that prayer didn't work, we wouldn't ask this of you, God. I believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We lift up to Mar Hammond's name in your name. Amen. Both Spear and Rutledge concluded with an amen as well. And very wisely, ESPN didn't reprimand him that we know of. They didn't even delete this. In fact, they have shared it on their website. I just find it very fascinating that on this week as we prepare for the epiphany of the Lord. We see both in the life of the Holy Father and in that simple prayer offered on ESPN, the truth that you and I, you and I and all of us are called to glorify God by sharing the gifts we have. Our first reading tonight from the prophet Isaiah is very inspiring and uplifting. The people were in uh, captivity in Babylon and they were very discouraged. And although they knew God was calling them to go back, to go back to Jerusalem and build the temple, they were very apathetic. Why bother? It's in ruins, our heritage lost. And in the face of that apathy, Isaiah wrote, Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Isaiah is telling them, glorify God. Go home. Rebuild the temple. Take your place in the world and see other nations will bring you riches. Other nations will come to you and give glory to God also. Use the gifts you have by being the nation you're called to be. Our second reading tonight is attributed to St. Paul. It's from the letter to the Ephesians. We do not believe that Paul himself wrote this letter, but it is very much in the keeping of his spirit and mission. Ephesians tells us, It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. What we are being told here is God came for all people. Christ came for all people. Glorify God by ministering to the Gentiles as well as the Jews. For this message is too good, too important to keep to yourselves. Then, of course, we come to the Holy Gospel from St. Matthew. If you attended one of the Christmas Masses that I offered, you heard a children's story that I read uh, based on this. Much research went into that story and uh, from the author's notes, I learned that scholarship now believes the Magi came from northern Arabia, which is east of Judah. They were probably Nabataean Magi, which means they probably weren't kings, but they were Zoroastrian priests, mathematicians, and magicians. And they brought the treasures of their homeland 
gold, frankincense, and myrrh. For this region controlled the gold mines, and they controlled the frankincense and myrrh routes. And so they brought these treasures to the Lord and offered them a most fitting sign. Yeah, they probably ran like that. <laughs> a most fitting sign that this God is worthy of our greatest gifts. These scriptures today remind us that you and I have the very simple and important calling to glorify God. But as I was getting ready for today, I began to wonder, what does that really mean, to glorify God? And on a website called Catholic Exchange, I found a great quote, a quote that summarizes, I think, what happened on, e um, e on ESPN early this week and happened to the life of Pope Benedict. We glorify God by magnifying him. That is, by making him more visible to others. In simple terms, to glorify God is to reveal him to those we encounter and throughout society. Whatever we do that does not reveal, or worse, obscures the holiness and goodness of God, frustrates our primary goal. We are primarily made for God's glory, to be his reflection in the world. It's that simple. You and I call to magnify the truth, light, and love of God to the world no matter where we are and no matter who we are. On this wonderful feast of Epiphany, let us give thanks for the treasures we've received in faith, hope, and charity. And let's boldly share them by simply magnifying God's goodness, living as we're called to live, and helping others to understand our Lord came for all people, that they may be set free, and they may know, love his, know his love and peace forever. Church throughout the world, let us profess our faith and say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made not substantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, that the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life the world to come. Amen. As we join the Magi from the East and humbly offer our gifts at the feet of Jesus, let us bring our prayers to God who shows the glory of Christ to all the world. For the pilgrim church throughout the world, 
May Pope Benedict XVI's scholarly writings and teachings continue to sanctify and purify her. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Amen. For peace in the world, that the light of God's word may lead the heads of nations to seek new paths for peace and the protection of the innocent. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our homes, which we bless today, that they will always be places of welcome, friendship, and love. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Rochester area Catholic family of parishes, that we welcome all those whom God leads to us and be blessed through the diverse gifts and talents which they bring. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God will heal, strengthen, and restore them to their loved ones. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, especially Rosemary Rugg, Gerald Voss, May they experience the peace and joy of the heavenly kingdom today and forever. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intercessions placed in our prayer basket and for James Davis, John and Dorothy Detloff, and Tanziana Marie Richardson, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And together let us pray the prayer for priestly vocations. Heavenly Father, Lord of the harvest, all forth vocations to the priesthood from our archdiocese and families. Jesus, eternal high priest, give us men willing to sacrifice and serve. Make our hearts after your own sacred heart. Holy Spirit, everlasting love between the Father and Son, strengthen, inspire, and set men on fire with divine charity. Grant them the courage to say yes to their vocation. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Mother of Priests, comfort and protect your sons as they discern their call. With Saint Joseph, may they know your love and companionship as they deepen their relationship with Jesus. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Anne, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, patron saint of priests, pray for us. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you, that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and ever to you. Thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or the offer of themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious, ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. And bless Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Constance, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the salvation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count them among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim. Therefore, Lord, as you celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you're pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, your altar and high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us at the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, grace you grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Amid us, we beseech you to your company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the same command, and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy Stay our daily bread and 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, grace and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look down on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grace to you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with you your spirit. spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace. Thanks for that. Emily. Hmm? I'm, I'm good now. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless us, God, of the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let's pray. Renew by sacred nourishment. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Even if the Magi were Nazarian priests, we should still sing We Three Kings, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> Reminder that the chalk uh, kits are available at the entrances to take home to bless your house. And there's a new altar server training to, uh, Monday, Monday, January 9th at 6 p.m. in the church. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow our heads for the blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, Proud and kindness is blessing upon you. Make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy the light from the light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord Jesus by our lives. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 